Okay, yeah, so I'll just say, um, hey, this is Kenji Lopez Alt from Serious Eats and the Food Lab, and I'm here with Dave Arnold, uh, and we're playing with the Spins All. Spins All, spins, spins everything, all. <laughs> not just spins anything. Yeah, all right. And it actually does, spins, it, it, you can do anything that you can do in like a three liter, uh, you know, bench top centrifuge, mm -hmm. which is, I know is quite rare. In fact, you can do it in one of these. That's kind of actually why I built it, because I really want, I want more people to be able to yeah. use, I love the centrifuge so much, I want it to be more accessible. I know right. it's not, still at the price point, it's not hyper accessible, but it's much more accessible than So, yeah, so it's a, it's a prototype of a product you're coming out with soon that's gonna retail yeah. for 700 bucks. Retail or higher Kickstarter yeah. for seven hundred, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Well, but uh, retail for around a thousand. Yeah. The nice, the nice thing about it is that it's n it's not actually a Kickstarter, so there's there if less it, risk. There's less risk <laughs> yeah. to, to you know to the consumer because at any time. Right. You're doing it through Modernist Pantry. At yeah. modernistpantry.com. Yeah. So at any time, someone can be like, you know what, I don't want it, and then they can cancel it okay. and get their money back. So it's All less right. risk to the consumer. All right. So let me run you through. Okay. Uh, super quick. Most of the applications that we do focus on the liquid, right? Mm -hmm. um, and all of, but there are like ones that focus on the solid, like butter or things like yeah. that, Greek yogurt, those kind of things. Um, so yeah. the, the centrifuge, basically, up until now, which is probably one of the reasons why you're not necessarily focused on it, is that it is not something that is feasible for anyone at home to use. So I wanted to address the problem of there's a lot of bars and restaurants that I think really could be interested in having um, a centrifuge, but it's too big, too expensive. Uh, but it needs to have a certain kind of quantity, right? So that, right, right, that was right. the main nut I was cracking is, can it do it? Is it small, is it friendly, can it have the quantity? And it's the same thing for home. Now, this rotor, unlike, unlike using vials or anything, this rotor, uh, you just load it continuously, so you're not balancing anything. These okay. pins come out and it seems like it's yeah. bad, like you might lose them, but it's actually, see that wedge? Behind the fin, yeah. Yeah, so it's allowing liquid to slip past around the very outside. Got it. And so it balances itself just like a, like a washing machine. It basically uses right. the liquid or the product, if it's a paste, it uses that to self-balance. Uh -huh. So what you need to do in order to add stuff continuously is feed the liquid underneath the surface, basically into mm -hmm. this zone. So notice this doesn't fit in. Mm -hmm. So you go like this, and now when you feed product into here, it's feeding underneath. Got it. So it comes out of the little, out of the little tubes underneath. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Right. So anyway, so it's really, so it's, I'll just fire it looks it up. like a food processor. Yeah. And you know, it's all, will be dishwasher safe. Um, since we're spinning that, we're not adding continuously. I'll just, I'll just take the rotor out so you can see uh, the uh, tube feeder out so yeah. you can see what's going on. So we're gonna spin this uh, one-year-old eggnog that's been aging for a while. Um, do we want to re-homogenize that at all before we? Yeah. Um, Better just put it in as you would have. If, if, if something's gonna evaporate, you want to put the lid on. Okay. That's about right. Now, if you overfill it, it's not a problem. Stuff will just come out of the rotor and we'll catch it with like a bowl here. When you're doing this, most solids, um, you're doing, um, unless, actually, you know, it's not true. Like you could do a project where you're harvesting something and then you could would do continuous even though you're trying to get the solids out. But, mm -hmm. but and that's it. So it self balances itself and mm -hmm. then you know, you just decide. What are, how long what are the controls on it? So it, they're going to be a little different in the actual production model. Um, this is the pump time, the uh, the rotor timer, okay. and I wanted to have like very analog controls. Even though there actually is a microprocessor yeah. on board, I wanted very analog controls. I like analog. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm a huge believer in analog controls. This this is the um, to run the pump on the back for when you're pumping product in. And yeah. by the way, like most people, there are uses, kitchen uses, just for this kind of pump, peristaltic pump. They're kind of esoteric, which is why I don't really talk about it, but mm -hmm. it comes built into the unit, so okay. it's kind of nice. This this is gonna be replaced. Right now, this is the pump speed, the back pump speed, because mm -hmm. so a product that clarifies more slowly, like tomato, you want to slow down the, the pump, and if something that clarifies more quickly, like milk punch, you want mm -hmm. to speed up. But when we're doing something like this, where you just preloaded it, I mean, that, that, it, it, those it, all that stuff's right useless. Yeah. And uh, but if this is changing from a switch to a dial, so you can infinitely change the speed of that. How um, how fast does it go? Like what kind of forces? Mm -hmm. So it's about two thousand G's, right? So about half of what the, um, the units, like the standard uh, bucket centrifuge units, do. Uh -huh. And 
to do that it's running it does you notice it doesn't have a constant speed so yeah, constantly yeah. changing the speed that's also part of the patent thing it helps equalize the puck around the outside and get like and, and is that is that based is that like pre-programmed or is it on a is there some kind of feedback that no it's pre-programmed but like if you're like with herb oil i'm just looking at the oil and i want to get rid of all the liquids and you'd actually i think you'd actually like the way that works and the way the way that works is is that it doesn't matter how much oil you use it doesn't matter mm -hmm. all that matters is the liquid right so you take your herb uh -huh. and you you take the, the the volume of the rotor and you subtract the herb from that okay and, and then you add water to this to fill it with water and that way you get all your oil back I mean, you just need the liquid there to fill the volume so that the oil gets pushed up. Yeah, yeah, right. And so, like, all the parts, all, like, the herbs or whatever, you know, we did parsley yesterday that's on my brain, but, like, that stuff just goes into the liquid phase and the oil gets pushed out. And so let's see whether we got any separation. We got some. Definitely got some. Oh, yeah, there's some. It's not, like, nearly as much of a separation now. Like, the fats are sinking down. We have a, I have a strainer. I brought yeah. um, ba -ba -ba What do you need? Uh, so I'm gonna pour this into. So it's not like nearly as hard a set as like uh, butter, and we di we didn't uh, acidify it. So like we could break it, I could get all the milk solids out. But we're what we're trying to do here is more of a fat. And I don't know why you'd want to remove the fat from eggnog unless you were a severe enemy. Spread it on the cookie. Or oh, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah. Right. So that's just pretty dry. Let's taste it. Oh, it's pretty. It's good actually. Yeah. It's like. Like boozy, clotted cream. <laughs> yeah, what's the defatted stuff taste like? But like regular straight old like fresh butter out of this thing is like one of my favorite things to do mm -hmm. because it's just so clean and relatively quick to using a KitchenAid, which is a freaking nightmare. I mean, I love doing it, but it's a freaking nightmare. It's good. What do you think? Yeah, it is good. Actually, I like it better. I don't really don't like thick. This is yeah. This is like eggnog. You can. It's more of a pounder. Yeah. <laughs> more, more of a pounding eggnog. Can you, can you like use it to defat some common food that, and, and, and sell it as like a, you know, to health food people? I mean, probably I detest it. It's hard for me to sell it to people who I so vehemently disagree with. <laughs> but, um, the... um, yeah. I mean, cocktail people for sure, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like, uh, yeah, lemon, lime, strawberries. The um, basically orange grapefruit, um, any of the. Could we, could we like clarify some grapefruit or lime right yeah, now? Yeah, sure. I think that's about it's about a pint. Yeah, it's about it's about five hundred mils. Five hundred mils. Maybe a little less. This is uh, suspended uh, colloidal silica. It's just a uh, very fine okay. silica. It's called Kiesel Sol. It's a wine finding agent. There there are things that work quicker, but nothing that's gentler. Mm. Uh, okay, so what's, what do we have now? Uh, yeah, I mean, we don't... We have 49? 50, 50 grams, yeah, 49. All right, so just do like... Okay, so normally I'll do like a 1 to 2, so let's do like a 1 to 3, which would be 150. I should get it. okay yield off 150. It should yes, still be okay. pretty dark, right? I think so. But how fine do you just blend it to... Blend the hell out of it. Blend the hell out of it. How much lemon juice did you add to the... Uh, like a teaspoon? Okay. So not enough to affect my numbers. It's actually, it's like fun to see whether or not we can get a good yield out of a small amount. Yeah, yeah. So you just pour the uh, liquid in. You don't want to get the water on the unit though. Because you mean into the, oh, into the base of the unit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because you don't want, you're, you're trying to avoid um, um, emulsifying water into your, plug this back on here. Plug the peristaltic pump. And that's the in. So you can take it, like, if we scrape this down, you can take it directly out of your um, Vita Prep container. Okay. And that's it. So you fire this up with um, the water base in it. And then I'm going to, for now, just turn this guy on. Okay. So, okay. And so it's already pulling out. And you can adjust the rate at which that. Yeah. So in the real life, that's going to be infinitely adjustable, but now it's on a it's on a switch. 
So I'm, I'm putting it in the in the slow mode now. So this has it, it, it uh, it's 400. So like uh, oil should start coming out in about two minutes. I always like to look at oil against uh, white. The best judgment. That's pretty clean. Mm -hmm. So if you were to compare this to um, just you know dripping overnight through a coffee filter. Well, the problem with dripping overnight over a coffee filter is that the stuff is sitting there oxidizing mm -hmm. and you're also never ever going to get the same yield out of it that you get. And you can do much higher, like I can basically make oil for, uh, out of pesto, you know what I mean? Out of what? Like something that's like pesto thickness I can do. Yeah. Yeah. And the flavors are usually pretty clean and bright and they last a lot, like centrifuge oils last a lot longer because there's no, there's no, um, there's no liquid in them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like when Noma and those guys do it, they have, uh, they make it, uh, like when the herbs are in, they make it and then they use it. <clears throat> did I inject that? You did. Okay. They, uh, they uh, make it like, you know, once a year when they get their herbs in, then they freeze them, and it, you know, freeze in quotes, you know, they keep them at cold temperature in vacuum bags. Like, I mean, this is a proto, so I wouldn't dishwash this, but the real one is all, like a food processor. All yeah, yeah, you just take it apart. And, yeah. See, the stuff coming out now is basically water. There's some of that old parsley and oil, and the stuff doesn't taste as good. Yeah. I mean, that stuff tastes like garbage, like swamp. You know what I mean? Like... Yeah. <laughs> so I really like that, like, I like that herb oil on pasta, I like it on bread. Yeah. So we'll start with... Um, I assume we are assuming we have enough product here to do continuous. Whatever. So like, yeah, my rotor can just take that whole thing. Okay. So uh, if you had more than the rotor can take, what you typically do is just pour in, um, you, know, you fill the rotor just to save time, mm -hmm. and then you pump the stuff pump in. The so I'm a terrible judge of time. You'll have to tell me when that thing is done. Oh, shoot. Yeah, probably. I mean, it's probably good five Are you minutes. also a terrible judge of time? Uh, I'm yeah. Saying, hey. Alexa, set a timer for five minutes. Five minutes. Seven minutes. I've only ever seen that in uh, iRobot, Mr. Robot, or it's called. Uh, yeah, you've, never, you've never used an Alexa? No. Is that Are they good? Uh, yeah, I mean, the voice recognition is really good. I hate Siri. I hate her. <laughs> no, she's, I mean, her, for what reason? For the... It doesn't work. Like, whenever I need it to work, it doesn't work. Like, it'll, it'll always ask me, what can I help you when I don't want it to help me at all? Yeah. And then, like, when I actually need the help, like, when I'm driving, I'm like, call Jennifer Carpenter. It's like, here's Jennifer Carpenter's phone yeah. number. I'm like, I don't want her fucking phone number. Let's fucking call her. You know what I mean? It's like... <laughs> Let's see whether we success or not. Oh, yeah, success. There you go. Oops. That's pretty wow, damn that clear. Is, um, yeah. Clear citrus. That's, uh, that's water clear. Yeah. I, mean, I don't even think that would break it. Um, major stuff to clear that. But all of those big floaty things will get caught in a, in a, you know one of these coffee filters. It's just super time. pain to make it without a centrifuge. I mean, you can do it. It's easy. Just agar agar clarification. Yeah. It's not a pain. It's not that hard for me. Like, you know, I'm an old hand at it, but especially cocktails, people that want to do the kind of cocktails that like I work on, mm -hmm. like this just makes it so much more, so much less messy and more fun. It's not like big thing of agar and boiling it and then like whisking it and then with the sack and the cleaning and the pulp everywhere. It's just like, you know, make it and throw it in the dishwasher, mm -hmm. which is good. It's hard for me, it's hard to predict exactly who's gonna buy it, you know, like, I mean, the seven hundred dollar tool on its own is like a is a tough sell, but the next thing I want to do is not is all is like a in in between, right? So if you have like like the products that I'm working on, you have like the Sears all is down here, it's pretty accessible, right? Wise, and then like you know the cocktail cube is down here, but again more niche. This is kind of up here, and then the next one I want to get is going to be like here. Mm -hmm. At that like 300, 200, 300. Not it won't be a centrifuge. One of the reasons I worked on this one next is because I know that the market is smaller. Mm -hmm. um, so that is empty. I don't like it's. 
you there's less of a drive to drive the, to get it so mass production that the prices go way down because it's the market's not that big. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it was kind of an ideal for me thing to work on before I worked on one that's much more mass. The next product, which is much more mass. You know what the next product's gonna be? Yeah, I've known for years. Are you telling anyone? Or no, you... no. Do you... you want the? Uh, anyone else can wash it. Oh, you can wash it. Yeah, stirred drinks obviously are good. Um, so my bet. Want to try some of this? Um, yeah, sure. My bet. This is uh, from our plum tree. Oh really? Yeah. It's like people are really picking up on the uh, on the home distillation, but it's just, yeah, it should not be illegal. It's illegal. And then we can do a thanks for. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Uh, All right. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Well, thanks for having me. I hope yeah. you enjoyed it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, there you go. All right. Spins all. Spins, Spins everything. All. Not just <laughs> Spins anything.